The connecting rod connects your small engine's piston to the crankshaft. It's usually made of aluminum and has a journal on either end that allows it to pivot. It's only replaced as part of a major engine failure that will involve other engine components such as the crankshaft, piston, and the cylinder. If the piston seizes to the cylinder due to low oil, the connecting rod will have damage to its journals. It may break in two due to the sudden stop. It might also break if the governor is set to allow the engine to run too fast. Replacing the connecting rod is a difficult repair requiring special tools and a more advanced level of small engine knowledge and repair experience. We offer this video as an overview of the repair so you can decide if it's something you want to tackle yourself, take to repair shop, or maybe decide to simply replace the mower. Before starting this repair, you'll need to drain the fuel from the fuel tank and the oil from the engine, which I've already done. So now I'm going to remove the spark plug, the kill cable, and the starter rope from the clip on the handle. Now I'll tip the mower onto its side and remove the blade. And the blade adapter. Now I'm going to remove the engine from the lawnmower's deck. I'll remove the lower two bolts completely and loosen the upper one. I'll tip the mower back onto its wheels and remove the last bolt. Now remove the starter assembly and the fuel tank. Next, I'm going to remove the ignition coil. And now I'll remove the carburetor. I'll remove the linkage from the carburetor. the governor arm. Now remove the flywheel. I'll remove the nut that secures the flywheel to the connecting rod. There's a few different ways you can remove the flywheel. You can use a flywheel puller or a gear puller, or the way I like to do it is I'll take the nut, I'll thread it back onto the shaft, so that it's loose, but it's covering the threads on the end of the shaft. Now I'm going to pry upward on the flywheel and at the same time strike the nut and shaft with a hammer. This will cause the flywheel to pop free from the shaft. Now I'm going to remove the valve cover. and the head. and I'll pull out the push rods. Now I'll separate the sump cover from the engine. Now remove the camshaft and gear. 
Now remove the two bolts that secure the two halves of the connecting rod's crankshaft journal. And now I can remove the piston from the cylinder. The connecting rod is secured to the piston by the wrist pin. The wrist pin is held inside the piston with two retaining rings. I'll remove one of them. Now I can remove the wrist pin. And the connecting rod. To install the new connecting rod, I'll first attach it to the piston. I'll remove the new bolts and separate the journal. I'll set these parts aside for now. I'll apply some oil to the piston side journal. I'll line the connecting rod with the piston and insert the wrist pin. And I'll secure the wrist pin with the retainer. Because the retainer is held in place with spring force, it should always be replaced so it doesn't come loose. Now reinstall the piston. The piston is marked on one side, usually with an arrow. Often, this arrow will point towards the exhaust valve side, but in this case, it points to the intake side. You'll need to refer to the manufacturer's engine service manual for this kind of information. I'll apply some oil to the piston rings and then install a piston ring compression tool to the piston. I'll set this aside momentarily and apply some more oil to the cylinder and distribute it around the cylinder. Now I'll place the piston into the cylinder with the arrow pointing in the correct direction. I'll press the piston into the cylinder so just the skirt is inside. Now I'll tighten up the piston ring compressor to compress the rings.
with the rings compressed, use a piece of wood, or I like to use the back side of a screwdriver, to tap the piston into the cylinder. You don't want to force the piston or you can damage the rings. I'll apply some more oil to the connecting rod journal. And then install the lower portion of the journal. And I'll secure it with the bolts. During reassembly, there are several torque values we're going to need to know for the various bolts, including the journal, the sump bolts, the head bolts, and the valve cover bolts. Also, the nut that secures the flywheel. Again, you'll need to refer to the manufacturer's service manual for your specific engine to get these values. I'll use my torque wrench to tighten the bolts. Now I'll take some time with the razor blade to remove the old gasket from both halves of the crankcase. As a general rule, all gaskets that you remove should be replaced. I'll be careful to keep the gasket out of the crankcase and any gasket that does fall in, I'll clean out. Now I'll reinstall the camshaft and gear. I'll need to align the timing marks on the camshaft gear and the crankshaft gear. Now I can reinstall the crankcase cover onto the crankcase. Be sure to install any shims that might be needed onto the crankshaft. Now I'll reinstall the bolts to secure the crankcase cover. I'll start by just seating the head of the bolt against the cover. Then I'll use a torque wrench to torque them to, to the correct value. Now I can reinstall the head. And same thing here. I'll tighten the bolts just by hand and then torque them to the correct value. And I'll reinstall the push rods. I'll reinstall the valve cover, install the bolts, and torque them to the correct value.
I'll reinstall the flywheel. And secure it with the nut. Again, torch to the correct value. And now I'll reinstall the ignition coil. I'll use my gapping tool to set the air gap. You can also use a thick business card. I'll hold the coil tightly against the flywheel and tighten the bolts. And I'll remove the gapping tool. I'll reinstall the wire to the kill switch. Now I'll reinstall the carburetor isolator the gasket, now the governor linkage, the carburetor, and I'll connect the linkage. The outer gasket, and the air filter base. and I'll replace the air filter and its cover. Next, I'll reinstall the fuel tank. and the starter. Now I can install the engine back onto the mower deck. and I'll reinstall the blade adapter and blade.
I'll reconnect the kill switch cable and place the rope back into the eyelet on the handle. And last, I'll reinstall the spark plug. And remember, before starting the engine, be sure to add new oil.